So when doing continuum mechanics, we're going to use partial derivatives, such as d by dt, and then d by dx, d by dy, and d by dz. The partial derivatives d by dx, d by dy, d by dz are not very useful by themselves. If I draw a coordinate system x, y, z, then d by dx gives me the variation in the x direction, keeping y and z constant, and this value gives the variation only in one direction, and worst of all, that direction depends on our man-made choice of the coordinate system. In other words, not only is it a property of the field, it's also a property of the way we have chosen to represent the field in space. So it's not very useful by itself. The real power of partial differential operators arises when they are combined. So we define here the DEL operator, also known as NABLA, and that's defined as, in the x direction, ex is the unit vector in the x direction, times the partial derivative of the property in the x direction, plus the unit vector in the y direction, times partial d by partial dy, plus the partial derivative in the z direction, times partial d by dz. And there is a convenient shorthand for this, which is to create a vector with partial d by dx, in the first row, partial d by dy in the second row, and partial d by dz in the third row. And we write it as if it were a vector. So this is a vector operator. And the operation that's represented by del is independent of the coordinate system. And we'll come on to some of the meanings of those operations in a moment. But the key point for this section is that those meanings do not depend on the coordinate system when one uses the del operator, all that happens is that you have to change the way you express the del operator in different coordinate systems. For example, in cylindrical polars, it is the unit vector in the r direction, the radial direction, times d by dr, plus the unit vector in the theta direction, times 1 upon r d by d theta, plus the unit vector in the z direction, times d by dz. And if you're ever wondering where the 1 upon r goes in this expression, just look at the units of the denominators. They all have to have units of distance. And theta, of course, by itself, does not have units of distance. Now, there's no convenient shorthand in cylindrical polars. And if you try to use the Cartesian shorthand above for cylindrical polars or spherical polars, you'll get into trouble. And this is because in those coordinate systems, the unit vectors change as you vary in space, as I will describe in a moment. So in a Cartesian coordinate system, the unit vectors, ex, ey, and ez, do not vary in space. On the other hand, in other coordinate systems, the unit vectors are not the same everywhere in space. For example, in cylindrical polar coordinates, based around some origin, the radial and azimuthal directions look like this. These don't change as we move in the radial direction, but as we move in the azimuthal direction, the radial and azimuthal unit vectors change. And these changes are given quite simply by partial der unit vector by d theta is equal to e theta. And partial d e theta unit vector by d theta is equal to minus er unit vector. And one has to remember to take this into account and be warned because it's very easy to forget.